Oh, yeah, man. All right. All right. So, how the fuck are we going to go about this? We're going to try and get this put up on the docket ourselves first, get ahead of it. So, well, we're not we're not going to do anything unless they actually breach the contact, right? So we, so here's how, basically how, how it played out. Um, Eugene is locked into an offer of 1,080,000, right? He either has to sell it to us for that price or he can't sell the car at all. Um, he's legally been notified of it. Everything is set in stone. We have it on paper, right? Um, he, he has to what? He has to, he has to... He, he has to sell it to us at the price that is stated in the contract or he doesn't have to sell it. He can either keep the car or he can sell it to us for that price because we are exercising our option to buy the car, right? Now, the thing is, um, we weren't going to do that. We wanted to have a chat with you and figure out how to go about it, but they were so impatient. They started strong, strong arming us. Which and they is decided why, to blow up a car. Yes, which is why we're now going down the route of strong arming them back, right? Um, I'm going to so, blow up this fucking casino. Yeah, maybe we should blow up this freaking casino. But basically, we're waiting for him to breach the contract now so that we can put it up on the docket because it just makes that case a bit easier. So once he, if he does transfer the car, if they do actually just buy it without our permission, then we'll be able to sue them for the punitive damages. It's really unfortunate because all we asked for was a little bit of patience so that we could discuss this with you more thoroughly. And then in turn, this is what we got. Alright, we're back, Uncle Tommy. Good morning, Eddie, Mary. How you All doing? Right. Oh, also we put in the new um the new prices for doing Benny's installs. So those are in the sales area now. Yeah, Wait, what's, okay. what's in there? So uh, Alan and Tommy wanted to charge people for doing Benny's installs. So that's in the sales area now, the, the different price for different install levels. Okay. Let me, um... <laughs> okay, I see it in here, the S&A Cosmetic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll give you guys some more official guidelines on exactly how Hello. Oh, uh, dickhead. How's it going, mate? Think you're fucking all smart blowing up a car in my shop. What? You came into my shop with a grenade and blew up a car. Nah, that wasn't me. Yeah, yeah. Be a fucking smart ass about it, would ya? Listen, dickhead. I'll blow up your fucking casino if you try any of that shit again. <laughs> you'll, you'll blow up my casino? Yeah, I will. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. I might just do that. You want to go with this All again, right. Dean? <laughs> what, 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 what exactly happening, mate? Well, you're trying to fucking... If you breach this contract, I'll take that fucking car. You understand that, right? <laughs> what, what, what breach has happened to the contract, exactly? I'm not saying there's been a breach, but if you do breach it, or Eugene breaches it, and I'll take it. Okay. Well, are you aware that Mary did put an offer on the table and then removed that offer? Right? So, technically, the contract doesn't exist anymore. She also tried to extort me by saying she will remove the contract if I put a million dollars in her pocket. You know about that? Well, listen, I'm still getting the rundown of things, but still, regardless. Right, right. Maybe you should talk to them before you come at me, mate. Listen, I'm still talking to them, but point still stands. You try and fuck with my shop like that, I'll blow up your fucking casino. <laughs> Alright. Alright. It's in a bit. Fuck face. <laughs> Mary! Where are you? You said you tried to extort him. No, no, no. We didn't try to extort him. He said you put an offer on the table, then took it off, so we voided the contract. No, we didn't take it off the entire time we wanted to buy the car. So what happened? I told him, I look, 
basically the long and short of it is they were locked into an offer we accepted the right of first refusal he kept demanding that we waive it so that he could buy the car he said we would need to discuss it with upper management before we did waives our right of first refusal and then he threw a hissy fit and then he blew up our car i offered him a million dollars dissolution fee for the contract and he declined it and that's that Okay, and this is all. Have you spoke to Hayes about all this too? It's all fine and dandy. Yeah, Hayes. Hayes was standing next to us when, they, when we had this entire conversation. All right. If it breaks it, we'll take him to court. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, we didn't do anything illegal. He can claim that we tried to extort him or we tried to commit racketeering, but a contract is a contract. The intention behind it is was good, and they strong-armed us into this position. Yeah. I don't like doing this. I don't want to take Mr. Watson to court and Eugene because I understand how shitty a position that he's in right now. But instead of having a little bit of patience and letting us speak with each other, they blew up a car with a grenade. Anyways, did you see the text that he sent me in the legal channel? Uh, no, let me check. This is the initial conversation that we had with Eugene. So... As you may remember, during the judgment for our court case, Crane cautioned against people doing this, where they would say they have an offer and they want to know what we would pay, right? So, to present, prevent that issue from happening, um, when he asked me what our offer was, I gave him what our legally required offer would be and informed him that we would happily exercise the right of first refusal, which pursuant to Section 2, Paragraph 4, thereby waives his opportunity to accept any offers or the rights to sell his vehicle to anyone except us. So, the discussion was, we were willing to talk about either paying him more or uh, waiving our rights and letting Dean buy it. But we wanted to talk to upper management before we did so, and they wouldn't let us do that. They wanted it now. And then it escalated from there. Hmm. I still want to blow up his casino. Yeah, I, I kind of want mm. to too. I feel like if we blow up his casino, then we're going to have four, six angry men in front of our place to see for blowing up our computer shop. Then we'll have six angry men blowing up the casino or whoever those six angry men are then we'll go to all their businesses and whatever fucking houses what? they've got and then we'll blow all them up too what? but you want to go to war maybe i need to sleep on it but yeah, if that shit happens you know yeah. it's unacceptable right i mean we're business people trying to discuss business and they blow up one of our cars Yeah, well, yeah, think on, think on the whole warrior thing, okay? Maybe sleep on that one. Hmm. Yeah. Yo, no taco. Mm, he wants to fucking go, hmm? What are your thoughts? Blow up the fucking casino. What's the coordinates for the casino? Um, we should keep an eye on a, we can see if Eugene sells a car, right? On his profile. Yeah, the second Let's go have a quick check. And okay. then we'll keep checking it like every day. And then, yeah, we'll uh, however it. we go about this 10 days thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. We, uh, we're, we're ready to put it up on the docket whenever he sells it, basically. Good thing that I had Hayes there for all that. Oh, fuck. You know, I yeah, will say, Dean, Dean might try and make a big deal out of the dissolution fee that I asked for, but there's nothing legal against offering money to dissolve a contract, or asking for money to dissolve a contract. Hmm. But he's going to try and claim that I committed racketeering or whatever, but he doesn't know the law. So. Hmm. So, 
We just gotta hope he doesn't sell the car. Basically, we're just gonna have to shaft Eugene. So, what happens after the 10 days? Right. He would just have so to put another notice in, right? To say he wants to sell it. We go through the same process so, again. So, basically, yeah, after after the 10 days, um, well, here's, here's the issue, okay. Because of how the contract is written, we have technically accepted an offer and exercised the right in our option to buy the car, right? It's like a stock option, you know? So, we now have the right to purchase his car at the price that we offered him, right? And he no longer has the right to get any more offers or sell the car to anyone else. But he can just wait out the entire contract and then do whatever he wants with the car, right? So if after 10 days, if he comes back with another offer, we're not required to give him one because he already, we already accepted that one. Right. So he either can give us the car for the price that we quoted him as we're contractually obligated to quote him or he can keep it, basically. So how much did we offer him? Uh, 1 million 80 thousand, which is the MSRP minus strikes. How many strikes do they have? Six strikes on it. And Dean offered, uh, what? Five million. Five? Yeah, five million dollars. Which was not verified by funds, which leads me to believe that um, he was just throwing a number out there to try and, and fuck us, you know? Yeah. So, for the, the language that he was using, he just wanted us to not buy the car, right? From what he wanted. He just wanted us to fuck off and let him buy the car from, from the team. Yeah, and I also need to talk to Rami about this VLC shit. Mm -hmm. Because and I yeah. we still need to control the, the sales. We can't just have cars being sold for crazy inflated prices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could talk about that. That's as much as, as nice as it would be to have that kind of money, but it'll fuck the market.